Hi, my name is Bohtan and today I want to cover a topic of story and plot. Um, apart from the distinction between the two levels, story and discourse, which is part of structuralist terminology, there is another tradition which differentiates between story and plot. These two terms overlap only partly with the terms story and discourse, since the terms story and plot are still used frequently in English studies, one needs to be aware of their meaning. The basic difference between story and plot was pointed out by Aristotle, who distinguishes between actions in the real world and units that are selected from this and arranged in what he calls mythos. These terms story and plot are used in English studies, uh, that are used in English studies were introduced and defined by the novelist and critic E. M. Forster in his aspects of the novel. Forster defines story as the chronological sequence of events and plot as the causal and logical structure which connects events. These definitions need some further clarification. A story is only a story at least if at least one event takes place, that is, something changes from state A to state B. Consider the following minimal stories. First, the crocodile eats breakfast, Fred jumped out of bed and the king died. And let's compare to this. The house has blue shutters. This last example is description rather than a story, precisely because no event takes place. Notice also that events in a story involve an eminent creature of some sort, uh, we can call it character, the crocodile, Fred, the king, and most stories involve a sequence of events rather than just one event. Manfred John thus gives the following definition of a story. A story is a sequence of events and actions involving characters. Events generally include natural and non-natural happenings like floods or car accidents. Action more specifically refers to willful acts by each character. Forster's example to illustrate the difference between story and plot are The king died and then the queen died. It's a story. The king died and then the queen died of grief. It's a plot. Plot can be considered as part of discourse since it is part of how the story is presented. Consider the following basic sequence of events. Girl marries young, husband treats her badly, husband dies and girl finally marries man who has loved her for a long time. And there are no doubt countless novels um, plays and romances which develop this basic story, just for example George Eliot's Middlemarch and Unburnt uh, the Tenant of Wildfell Hell. Despite the similarities of the basic story, the causal and logical connections between events, the plots of these two novels are quite different. different sorry. Nonetheless, the distinction between story and plot is still widely used to differentiate degrees of connectivity between events in the narrative. The narrative can have one or more plot lines, that is, events that can center around one or more groups of characters. In Dickens' Black House, uh, Bleak House, for instance, there is the plot line which centers around Lady Deadlock and the discovery of her guilty past, and there is the plot line which centers around uh, Esther Summerson and her growth to maturity. Single plot novels are comparatively rare. Most novels develop multiple plots. These multiple plot lines are not necessarily all of the same importance. They can be a main plot line and one of more subplot lines. When each plot line is brought to a satisfactory ending, one also talks of a close structure. This is often the case in Victorian novels, where there is a frequently an entire chapter at the end, trying up all the loose ends of the plot and giving a short glimpse of the character's future. A tight plot also contributes to increased suspense, and conversely, lack of suspense or tension in narrative can in part be explained by the absence of a tight plot. Thank you very much for your attention. See you in next videos. Goodbye.